بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا Respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله uh, Today we will be analyzing the third sermon of Nahjul Balagha, and this is a very known sermon. It's very famous, and it is also controversial. This sermon is the sermon that some accuse a Sharif al Radi, the, the, the one who compiled Nahjul Balagha, they accuse him of making it up and fabricating Nahjul Balagha. This is perhaps this is the reason why some question the authenticity of Nahj al Why? Because in the sermon, and this is something rare that we see, where Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, he actually speaks out about what happened, how the Khilafah was usurped from him. And he speaks about why he made such and such decision. Why did he not fight for it? and he justifies the decision that he made. So therefore, this is a controversial topic because today, some of the uh, mainstream, you know, the Sunnis, they say, no, Imam Ali alayhi salam, he had no problem with the caliphs that came before him. Fatima al-Zahra had no issue, Imam al-Hasan, Imam al-Hussein, Imam Sadiq, the Imams of the Ahl Bayt, they had no issue. It's the Shia today. They're the ones who are making a big fuss and making a big deal about the Khilafah. Otherwise, Imam Ali, he accepted the, the first Khalifa and the second and the third. And then when the Khilafah came to him, he when the Khilafah came to him, then he um, he took the he took the position of power, making it seem as if there was no problem whatsoever. And it is the Shias that are causing this fuss and causing this division within the Ummah. But this sermon, Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, he speaks his mind and he talks about the views of the Shia. And in it, are, this sermon is basically the view of the Shia today, saying how Imam Ali alayhi salam was the greatest of the companions. And in this sermon, Amir al-Mu'mineen mentions that. He was the greatest. <laughs> And this, is, this goes against the narrative today, because today they come and they say Abu Bakr was the best, and then Umar, and then Uthman, and then finally Ali ibn Abi Talib. And the second issue is that Amir al-Mu'mineen, he mentions that the Khilafah was usurped. Khilafah was unrightfully, wrongfully, it was taken away from him. And rarely do we see Imam Ali alayhi salam, he gets into this topic. See, Imam Ali alayhi salam, he was always trying to maintain the peace. He was always trying to maintain the unity. And he did not speak of this much, or we don't have many recordings of Imam Ali speaking in this way. You see, you read Nahj al you see he talks about Tawheed. He talks about the virtues of the Ahl al-Bayt. He talks about Rasulullah. He talks about the creation. Rarely he gets into these personal issues. And... In this sermon, he actually discusses it. Now, why is it that we don't see a lot of this type of rhetoric, this type of talk from Imam Ali alayhi salam? One is that Imam Ali was trying to preserve the unity. Imam Ali knew that if he comes out with full force and he keeps talking about issues like this, that's going to cause wars, that's going to cause division. And his whole life, his whole life cause was to raise Islam and grow the Muslim community. He, he, spent, he, he sacrificed so much during the life of Rasulullah to make Islam grow as a religion. He didn't look at it as he, it was just something for himself. While the others, when they came to power, they were only looking at their own self-interest. Imam Ali was not looking at his self-interest. He allowed the interest of the Muslims to surpass his own interest. This is one. And second, even those times that we do have where Imam Ali alayhi salam, he spoke, the followers of the Ahl Bayt alayhi salam, they were living under very strict and difficult times where they did not have the freedom to speak these type of things. 
they were living under extreme taqiyya, anyone who says anything, because this kind of rhetoric, this kind of speech, it goes, it bumps head with the, with the uh, rhetoric and the narrative of the authorities. Anyone who says anything that goes against the authorities, right away they would be killed, they would be persecuted, and they would have to pay the price, as many did pay the price. Fatima to Zahra paid the price. These are the days of Fatimiya. Fatima to Zahra paid the price. Imam al Hussein paid the price. And many of the Sahaba of Rasulullah, they paid the price for their speaking out against the injustice of the time. But this sermon, it's called a Shakshaqiya. And the name of it is it's taken out from the last statement in the last sentence of the sermon where shakshaqiya it refers and it describes the foaming of the mouth which gushes out of the mouth of a camel or an animal so the camel when in times of um when 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 they are going through difficulties when they are going through some type of uh you know difficulties and challenges sometimes the 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 camel they start foaming at the mouth foam starts developing at the mouth and this doesn't happen all the time and then once it subsides then the camel goes back to normal so here amir al-mu'minin alayhi salam he begins speaking he starts talking about how the khilafah was taken away from him the first and then the second and then the third and then the three groups the nakithin the qasitin and the mariqin the battle of jamal the battle of safin and the battle of Nahrawan were waged against him. While he's talking, at the end of the sermon, someone comes and cuts him off. Someone comes and hands Amir al-Mu'mineen a letter. He begins to look at the letter. He sees that there are some something important. He kind of gets distracted from what he was saying. Then Ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Abbas, who is the cousin of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Abbas is the uncle of Amir al-Mu'mineen and the uncle of Rasulullah. Uh, uh, the uncle of Rasulullah. Abbas, his son, Abdullah ibn Abbas, he was one of the top students of Amir al-Mu'mineen. He takes his tafsir of the Quran from Amir al-Mu'mineen and Sunnis and Shias relatively both accept his, uh, his words. So Ibn Abbas, he tells Amir al-Mu'mineen, continue after the man, after the man interrupted him. Then Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, Hey, hat, ya ibn Abbas. No, oh, Ibn Abbas. Tilka shakshakatun hadarat thumma karrat. This was a shakshaka. This was a foaming at the mouth, meaning that this was something, a spur of the moment. I had to relieve that from my heart. And now it's relaxed. Now it's calm. So then Ibn Abbas, he tells him, قَالَ إِبْنَ عَبَّاسِ فَوَاللَّهِ مَا أَسِفْتُ عَلَىٰ أَسِفْتُ عَلَىٰ كَلَامٍ قَدْ كَأَسَفِي عَلَىٰ ذَلِكَ الْكَلَامِ Ibn Abbas, he says, nothing broke my heart as much as hearing that Imam Ali, he's not continuing, he's not saying what is really in his heart. Imam Ali, alayhi salam, his whole life, in order to preserve the unity, in order to preserve the cause of Islam and Muslims, Imam Ali, alayhi salam, he would not speak everything that was on his mind because his goal and his vision was to see islam grow of course this was not not all of the sahaba of rasulullah had this mentality in fact imam ali was the only one the others they came for the sake of power they killed they waged war they caused corruption they caused bloodshed imam ali alayhi salam he would always allow the the islam and the muslims to be surpassed his own rights, the rights of the Muslims, and he would always give in his own right. So this is why this is called a shakshaqiya. It means foaming at the mouth. And this is a title that is taken from the last word, the last statement of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. When was the sermon delivered? This sermon through the context of the sermon, we understand that this was delivered at the end of the life of Amir al-Mu'mineen. After witnessing the many struggles that he faced, the first Khalifa, the second, the third, then when Khilafah came to him, and then when the Nakithin and the Qasitin and the Mariqin, three groups of people, they waged war against Imam Ali alayhi salam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he tells Imam Ali during the life of Rasulullah, he tells him, you will be the one who will fight the Nakithin, the Qasitin, and the Mariqin. Who are the Nakithin? 
Akithin, they are the ones who turn against their own allegiance. After giving their word and giving their bay'ah to Imam Ali, they turn against it. Who were they? They were the people who fought Imam Ali in the battle of Jamal, in the battle of Jamal, the camel. They gave bay'ah to Imam Ali because 70 days before the death of the Prophet was the day of Ghadir. The day of Ghadir, over 100,000 Muslims on the way returning from Hajj, they stopped in Ghadir which is a little on the way, you know, just in the outskirts at leaving Mecca after they had just left Mecca. Rasulullah stopped them and he raises the hands of Amir al-Mu'mineen and he says, Man kuntu mawlah, fahada aliyun mawlah, Allahumma wali man walah, wa'adi man adah, wansur man nasarah, wakhdul man khadalah. And they gave allegiance to Imam Ali alayhi salam. Then, as soon as Imam Ali took the Khilafah, they left, they go to Basra and they wage a war Imam Ali goes to meet them in Basra. He tries to get them to stop. They start shooting the arrows. And this was led by the wife of the Prophet, Aisha. And some of the top companions, Talha and Zubair, they were referred to as the Nakithin. And then the second group was the Qasitin. This was Muawiyah and his group of people who were in Sham this time. They blamed the murder of Uthman on Imam Ali and they refused to give bay'ah to Imam Ali. They are the Qasitin, the ones who deviated away from the right path. And then the third group that Rasulullah told Imam Ali he's going to fight, they are the Mariqeen. Mariq means when something shoots off. So they say that the arrow, it shoots off of the bow, it leaves the bow. So they leave Islam and they leave the religion just as the arrow leaves the bow. And they, they were the group of people who were the Khawarij. They used to pray, they used to fast. You look at them, you see that they are, they look very religious, but in fact, they are fighting the imam of their time and they waged the war and they started calling Imam Ali a kafir. So these are the group of people, the three groups, and he mentions th this term, nakithin, qasatin, and maraki. Now we move on to another very important point before we go into the sermon, and that is the sources of the sermon. What is the source of the sermon? Because the sermon is a little bit, you know, it's um, it's a controversial sermon. Some have accused a Sharif al Radi of fabricating and inventing it, and they say this is the words of a Sharif al Radi. Imam Ali he never said these words. However, the fact of the matter is that if we analyze it, we see that this is a sermon that this, there's no issue with the source. It's just that some they can't accept the truth. For some. If there's a narrative that goes against the mainstream narrative, they're going to accuse it. They're going to try to keep questioning it because it questions their narrative. But Imam Ali alayhi salam, Imam Ali alayhi salam, these are his words and we have many sources of this. In addition to Nahj al-Balagha, Nahj al-Balagha, Sharif al-Radi, he, he died in year 406 Hijri. 406 after Hijrah. Right now we are in 14, we, we are in the 1400. So over a thousand years ago. Now, uh, this was, he died in 1015 common era. So this was over a thousand years ago. A Sharif al Radi, he, he compiled Nahj al Balagha. But the, in addition to Nahj al Balagha, Alam al Amini, a scholar who died about, you know, in the he, who lived in the last century, he, has a huge several volumes by the name of Al Ghadir, Mosu'at Al Ghadir. He lists over 28 sources to Al Khutbah al Shakshakiya, over 28 sources. And some of these were sources that were prior to Nahj al Balagha, meaning that this was a known sermon. Many people had the sermon memorized. But during the time of a Sharif al Radi, and when he died in 406, Many people, many of the Shias and others, they had the sermon memorized. So you can't come and say that this goes back to Sharif al Radi. He invented this when we have proof that it existed before Sharif al Radi. Some examples uh, one of the Sunni scholars by the name of Ibn al Jawzi, he's a Mufassir, he's a big scholar. He died in 597 Hijri after Sharif al Radi. But in his version, when he writes Al Khutbah al Shakshakiya, he begins it with a different intro. He, sa he, he says, 
when a man came and asked Imam Ali, الآن, what is it that delayed you until now? So Imam Ali then began to talk about the sermon. So he says the fact, and scholars, they say the fact that Ibn al-Jawzi, a Sunni scholar, he has a different intro to the same sermon. It means that he had a different source, a source that Sharif al-Radi did not have, or he had access to the same source that Sharif al-Radi had, and this means that Sharif al-Radi did not invent the sermon on his own. Another scholar, Ibn al-Maytham al-Bahrani, he's a Shi'i scholar, but he says he found the sermon in two sources of individuals who died before the birth of Sharif al-Radi. And Ibn Abi al-Hadid al-Mu'tazali, a, a, a big Sunni scholar who has written a commentary on Nahj al balagha he says that he finds it funny that some attribute the sermon to a Sharif al-Radi. He says, how can anyone speak in this eloquence in this way? And there are many other sources, Sheikh al-Mufid, Ibn Qiba, al-Saduq, and many other scholars, many other scholars, they have documented this sermon. Sheikh al-Mufid, he is the teacher of Sayyid al-Murtada and Sayyid al-Radi. And he documents it in several times in his book Al-Irshad and Al-Jamal. In other books, Sheikh al-Saduq, who lived before Sheikh al-Mufid, he mentions this. So this is a, an, a known sermon. It is narrated by Sunnis and Shias alike. But of course, obviously, some are not going to like the, what is said because what is said directly goes against the mainstream narrative. Now, inshallah, we will begin and the analysis of the sermon, and inshallah, we will continue on later. Amir al Mu'minin begins the sermon, sermon of Nahj al Balagha. He begins, Ama wallah, laqad taqamasaha ibn Abi Quhafa, wa innahu layalam anna mahalli minha mahalla al Qutbi min al Raha, yan hadiru anni sail, wa la yarqa ilayya al Tayr, fasadal tu dunaha thoba. وطويت عنها كشحا وطفقت أرتئي بين أن أصول بيد جذاء أو أصبر على طخية عمياء يهرم فيها الكبير ويشيب فيها الصغير ويكدح فيها مؤمن حتى يلقى ربه I'm going to read the translation and then I'm going to explain it. He says, أما والله, beware by Allah, the son of Abu قحافة this is referring to Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr, his name is Abdullah ibn Uthman. His father's name is Uthman. And his father's title is Abu Quhafa. Just like Imam Ali alayhi salam, his father was, his title, his kunya was Abu Talib. So they say Ali ibn Abi Talib. Abu Bakr, he is Abdullah ibn Abi Quhafa, the son of Abu Quhafa. Even though his father's name is Uthman, but they call him Abu Quhafa. So he says, beware, by Allah, the son of Abu Quhafa dressed himself with it. Meaning he, he took the khilafa, he dressed himself with it, the caliphate, and he certainly knew that my position in relation to it was the same as the position of the axis in relation to the hand mill. Meaning that the hand mill, the, the raha, when they when they're grinding the wheat, the axis is the pole. It's right. It's, it's the part in the middle. It's the essence. It's the focal point. He says he took it. He, he wore the shirt of the Khilafah when he knew that I am the pole. I am the axis. I am the one who is the focal point when it comes to the Khilafah. So what is he trying to say? He's trying to say that he took a position that does not belong to him, taqammasaha, when you're, when, you're, when you're assuming the position of something else, they say this is taqammus, when you're acting as if you have another role, you're, 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 uh, you're basically someone who's taking the position of something else, they, say, they call that taqammus in Arabic, basically you're wearing someone else's shirt, because taqammus, it's, it's from the word qamis, qamis means shirt, laqad taqammasaha, Ibn Abi Quhafa, he knows 
that I am the one who deserves the position of the Khilafa, of the imama, of the leadership after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And he, know, he knows that I am the axis. And then this is one, one, he says, I am the axis. This is one. And then he says, The flood water flows down from me and the bird cannot fly up to me. What does this mean? This means that if the flood water flows down from a person, that means this person's at the peak. The peak of the mountain. Does the flood water come to the peak of the mountain? No. The 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 flood water goes beneath the the peak of the mountain. So he says, meaning that I am the source of the knowledge. I am the one who who gives the knowledge, the fatwa. The religion, I am attached to the source of Islam. I am the one who knows the meaning of the Quran. I am the one who is the closest to Rasulullah. And even the bird cannot reach up to me. What does this mean? This means that I have such a high status in the eyes of Allah, in terms of the closeness to Rasulullah, in terms of understanding the Quran, that even the bird cannot reach me. Of course, this is all metaphor. It means that none of the Sahaba can, none of the Sahaba can reach the status that I have, and I am the one who is the source of the knowledge. So, basically, he's saying I don't have an Imam because I am the one who gives the knowledge. The the flood water comes down from me, meaning the knowledge comes down from me, meaning I don't receive anyone else's knowledge. I don't receive anyone else's order. And I don't need anyone in terms of knowledge. And my knowledge is pure, just like the, the, the flood water or the water that's melting on the peak of the mountain. That is the purest. That is the cleanest. Once it comes down, it gets filtered. It gets filtered and it becomes dirty. But when it's coming from the source, that is the cleanest. That is the purest. It is the highest. And Imam Ali alayhi salam, he's trying to tell people, if you want the purest Islam, if you want the cleanest Islam, if you want the unfiltered, unfabricated version of Islam, then you take it from me. And then he says, and then he says, يَنْحَدِرُ عَنِّي السَّيْلِ وَلَا يَرْقَى إِلَيَّ الطَّيْرِ فَسَدَلْتُ دُونَهَا ثَوْبَا وَطَوَيْتُ عَنْهَا كَشْحَا He says, then, I was the highest and I have the source of the knowledge. I am the, the peak. But then he says, but I put, put, I put a curtain against the caliphate and kept myself detached away from it. He says, even though I am the one who was the one who was the most worthy of the khilafa, but I put a curtain. I didn't go after it. I didn't pursue it. And the reason for that was in order to keep the peace. The reason for that was because I saw that Islam was going to be hurt if I go and I pursue a pursue the Khilafah and cause bloodshed and cause fighting. And Amir al muminin in another part, he says, Wallah la usalimanna ma salimat umur al muslimin I will be at peace as long as the Muslims are at peace. But then Imam Ali alayhi salam, he goes on to explain why Why did I detach myself away and why did I not pursue it even though I am the one who is worthy and the Khilafah belongs to me and I am the one who's supposed to be the first and the foremost so he, he begins to explain why he says basically he says, فَسَدَلْتُ دُونَهَا ثَوْبًا وَطَوَيْتُ عَنْهَا كَشْحًا وَطَفِقْتُ أَرْتَئِي بَيْنَ أَنْ أَصُولَ بِيَدٍ جَذَّا أَوْ أَصْبِرْ عَلَى طَخْيَةٍ عَمْيَا He says, I saw that I had two options. The reason why I detached myself away and I didn't go and fight, I didn't go and, you know, cause a problem and cause a fitna was because I saw what the, he says the first option. He says the first option that I had, He says, I saw that I, the, the, the decision that I had was to fight with a broken hand. 
Can anyone fight with a broken hand? No, you can't. So he's trying to say that I didn't have supporters. I didn't have, I didn't have the Muslims supporting me, standing with me, even though they knew that I was the one who was worthy of the Khilafah, even though they had given me the bay'ah 70 days before the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the fact of the matter is that Amir al-Mu'mineen was outnumbered after the death of the Prophet. Yes, there were many of the Sahaba that believed that Imam Ali was worthy and the Khilafah belonged to him, but they weren't going to come and, you know, put their lives at risk. They weren't going to come and get arrested and, and, and cause problems for themselves because the others, they had brought an army, they had established martial law and anyone who would stand against them, right away this person would be killed, right away this person would be arrested, right away this person would, you know, lose their status in the community. Fatima al-Zahra, alayhi salam, she paid the price. That's why Fatima al-Zahra died within 70 days or 90, 90 days after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Malik ibn Nuwayra, one of the companions, he paid the price. And several, several of the companions of Rasulullah, they were marginalized, they were sidelined because they had a position that was close to Amir al-Mu'mineen. They wanted the support of Amir al-Mu'mineen. So he said, I didn't have the supporters. I saw that I could either fight with a broken hand or or I be patient enduring the, blind, the, the blinding darkness of tribulation. So basically, Amir al-Mu'min had to choose either to fight and not have supporters, and that would break the unity, that would cause problems, and he would not gain what he wanted to. And or second, he chooses patience. And the fact of the matter is that the situation, a lot of people today, they come and they say, why didn't Imam Ali fight? Why didn't Imam Ali say anything? Imam Ali, alayhi salam, he tried several times. He tried several times. But the issue was very difficult. The narration says that after the Khilafah was taken away from him, some of the companions, they stood against Abu Bakr and they told him, no, this does not belong to you. But of course, they had established martial law. Even someone like Imam Ali, alayhi salam, he was brought out of his house and forced to give bay'ah. Some of the companions of Rasulullah, historians, Sunnis and Shias, they say that fire was taken to the house of Fatima to Zahra salam. Now some, they come and they say, no, there was a threat of fire, but there is a lot of proof to suggest that no, fire was taken to the house of Fatima to Zahra salam. And this is, these are clues from Sunni and Shia books. So Imam Ali salam, he saw that he was outnumbered. It is said that his companions, they came to him and they tell him, oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, you are the one, the Khilafah belongs to you. He tells them, tomorrow, I want 40 of you, 40 of you to come, have your heads shaven and come. If, you, if I have 40, I will know that, we, I, will, I will do something about it. And, and we will fight and we will try to take the Khilafah. The next day, he saw two or three people come, Salman, Maqdad, and Abu Dhar. And then Ammar came a little bit late. So no one came. No one, no one was wa willing to risk it. So Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, he tells them, go. This is not the time. This is not the time. I have a, I have a, a will from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He tells me, if you have supporters, then you do something. But if you don't have supporters, then leave it and be patient. Because Imam Ali alayhi salam, he knew that Islam was a young religion and there were many that wanted to cause division, wanted to cause division and weakness within the Muslims. You know, one of the first individuals who came to Amir al-Mu'mineen and pledged his support was one of the worst enemies of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Abu Sufyan, the father of Muawiyah and grandfather of Yazid. Abu Sufyan, he fought against the Prophet in Badr and Uhud and Ahzab. He fought against the Prophet at the end of his life. At the end of the life of the Prophet, he joined the religion of Islam. He was the first who comes to Amir al-Mu'mineen and tells him, they, they, they took the Khilafah from you. You have to come and fight. Amir al-Mu'mineen tells him, leave. You don't, want the, you don't want to cause your aim, your intention is not pure. You just want to cause division within the Muslims. So he, he didn't allow that. Imam Ali alayhi salam, 
He always stood with his principles and his values. He didn't allow his, his aim and his ambition to come in the way of his values. And many people do that. Today, many people, they allow their ambition, their goals, what they want in life, even if it's something good, they allow that to come in the way of the values. Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, purity cannot be built upon something false. I can't build a khilafa that is pure upon bloodshed that is wronging others, that is causing problem, that is causing fitna. So Imam Ali alayhi salam, he did not pursue it. So he says, I saw that I could either fight with a broken hand or asbir ala takhiyatin amya or I be patient on a tribulation that is blinding, that makes the elder person grow older, and the younger one become very old, and a mu'min struggles in it until he meets his Lord. Meaning that it's not easy. And my dear brothers and sisters, today, until today, the struggles that we are facing as Muslims, as Shias, it's, it goes back to the day the Khilafah was taken from Amir al muminin Because the Ummah was diverted. But Imam Ali alayhi salam, he saw that he, if he fights, it was going to cause a worse problem. He wanted to at least allow Islam to grow a little, and then he will be able to guide, uh, guide from an, a, a, a way that is even though he's not in the position of leadership, but he will still be able to guide as he did so. So this is the, the first part of the sermon. Now, several points. Why did Imam Ali alayhi salam praise himself? Some people say, this is strange. You're not supposed to praise yourself in Islam. Where he says, where Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, he says, why would anyone praise themselves? This is not the way of the Ahlul Bayt. The answer here, Imam Ali is not praising himself. Imam Ali is revealing the truth that has been neglected, the truth that has been sidelined. Revealing the truth is different from coming and wanting praise. When Imam Ali wants to guide people, when Imam Ali wants to teach people, he has to tell them his position, his status. Stating your rightful position is not self-praise. Imagine there is a, you know, someone is sick and there's a group of people and one of them is a doctor. The doctor, when the doctor comes and says, I am the doctor, let me cure this person. This is not the doctor curing himself. This is the doctor announcing that I am qualified to be able to cure this person. Let me be the one who who takes the leadership. Let me be the one who takes the, the authority. Amir al-Mu'mineen, he saw Muslims, each one fighting. The battle of Jamal came, the battle of Nahrawan, the battle of Safin, and each one of the caliphs before him, they came and they caused problems. They removed the ummah from the right path that it was supposed to be on. So he saw that all these problems, he told them, I am the one. And I am the one who, who, is, who is at the peak. I am the one who is the qutbi min raha the pole in, in, when, it comes to, when it comes to Islamic leadership. So this is one point. Second is Amir al-Mu'mineen, he's coming and saying, I am the highest, I am the pole. Is this proven or is this just his own words? The answer is yes. Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, when he speaks, this is proven. The Imam proved it through the words of Rasulullah. When Rasulullah says, I am the city of knowledge and Ali is the gate. When, when all of the companions turned to Imam Ali in order to seek knowledge, Abu Bakr turned to him, Umar turned to him, Uthman turned to him, all of the companions, they would seek knowledge from Imam Ali because they know that he's the most knowledgeable. He never asked any of the Sahaba for questions. He would only ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa A third point is why would Imam Ali complain? This is, you hear this, he's, it's as if why would he say this? Isn't Imam Ali complaining? Aren't you supposed to be patient? This is also a, an issue. Being patient is one thing. Imam Ali was patient. Imam Ali did not cause division. Imam Ali did not cause problems, but stating the truth is something else. Imam Ali alayhi salam, he's stating the truth so that people know the truth, so that people know that the Khilafah was taken away from the rightful source. Now, 
here, the next part, inshallah, we will continue in the following week. Amir al-Mu'mineen, he, he comes and he says, I, I saw, he, he comes and he says, that, um, he says, وَطَفِقْتُ أَرْتَئِ بَيْنَ أَنْ أَصُولَ بِيَدٍ جَذَّاءَ أَوْ أَصْبِرَ عَلَىٰ تَخِيَةٍ عَمْيَةٍ I had two choices, either fight with a broken hand or be patient, and then he comes and he says what he chose and why he chose that. فَرَأَيْتُ أَنَّ الصَّبْرَ عَلَىٰ هَاتَ أَحْجَاءَ I saw that patience was something that was needed right now. Right now at that moment, it was the wiser decision. I was patient, so I adopted patience, although there was pricking in the eye and suffocation in the throat, meaning that the patience was not easy. Imagine you're being patient and you have a throne, you have a throne, a, a, a thorn in your eye or you have something suffocating your throat. Can you be patient with that? If you have something in your eye, you're not going to be able to be patient. Or if you have something blocking your airway, you're not going to be patient. Amir al-Mu'mineen says, I had to choose the path of patience because I couldn't fight. And that was a very bitter patience. That was a very difficult act of, that I had to endure. Inshallah, in the following week, we will continue where we left off. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآله